This is the Corsair K95 RGB Platinum mechanical gaming keyboard, and right now it represents the best mechanical gaming keyboard that Corsair can make, with their best switches and their best features, and of course, their most expensive price at $200 US. Why does it cost $200? Well, let me tell you all of the things that it has. First, Cherry MX speed switches, already detailed upon their introduction in my Corsair K70 rapid fire video. I'll link that up in the corner. They have 45 gram actuation force, 1.2 millimeter actuation distance. And if these switches are too fast for you, thankfully they'll also have the K95 Platinum with Cherry MX Brown switches too. Those have two millimeter actuation distance, so you don't have to, you have to push them down a little bit further for them to actually register. The keys are all individually lit and per key programmable with Corsair's Q software. They've also added a 19 zone, fully programmable light edge, uh, sort of edge of light along the top. Uh, do note the smooth color transitions along that with minimal hot spotting, which Corsair was pretty proud to point out at CES. The K95 Platy is also available in black worldwide, like the one that you see here, or if you're buying in North America, you can get it in gunmetal. Uh, the regional restriction for that one is only at launch though, so hit up Corsair if you want to know when that gunmetal finish will go global. It has an anodized brushed aluminum frame that's one solid piece across the top, so it's lightweight and strong with the whole keyboard weighing 1.31 kilograms or 2.88 pounds. Corsair has kept the USB pass-through just like on the K70 RGB, which I like, but although the keyboard itself requires a USB 3.0 plug, the pass-through, unfortunately, is only USB 2.0. The macro keys from the previous K95 are still there, but it's reduced to a single row of six programmable G keys with textured keycaps. You can assign single keystrokes or complex multi-key combos to these with the Corsair Utility Engine software. Accessories include documentation, of course, info on the two-year warranty, a keycap puller, and a set of textured and contoured replacement keycaps, WASD for FPS players, and WERQDF for MOBA games. Another nice accessory is the wrist rest, which is full length and detachable with a dual-sided magnetic pad with a soft touch finish. You can flip over if you want textured or a non-textured feel. A new feature on the underside of the keyboard provides crossed cable management channels, which most likely will be used for a headset. Uh, it's great to use if you have like a USB headset that you can plug into that USB pass-through and then route underneath, but it did also remind me that there's no headphone and mic analog pass-through on the K95 Platinum. A missing feature. Rounding out the features though, we have 100% anti-ghosting with full key rollover while connected via USB, and shame on you if you somehow use an adapter and plug this into a PS2 port by the way, we've moved on from that. As well as a braided fiber cable, nice and thick, with two plugs, one for the keyboard and one for the USB pass-through. And now on to the RGB LEDs and the software. So first, you've got onboard storage. You actually get eight megabytes of profile storage built in with three profiles that are accessible. Those will store your hardware macro as well as lighting effects. There's a 32-bit ARM Cortex processor that handles the onboard flash storage and the LED display controllers that are integrated. So all this means that you can save any backlighting effects that you set up, even the more complicated ones, and the multi-level in-game macros to the onboard memory in three different profiles, then unplug the keyboard and take them with you without the need to install the Q software on the system that you move the keyboard to. That's pretty cool. That Cortex processor in there is also nice and fast, so the software updates that you do in the software right to the keyboard with pretty much no wait time at all unless you're doing a firmware update and that only takes a few seconds. The Q software has come a long way and you can also use it to control and sync Corsair headsets and mice and even mouse pads. And I like that they've separated the advanced sections so it's a little bit less daunting for new users. The complexity of this software was uh, a bit of a barrier to entry for new people. It will prompt you to update firmware when available when you plug the keyboard in and it detects it. And then macros can be set up in the actions menu while lighting effects are available in the lighting effects section. Cool looking effects presets can be selected such as rainbow spiral, rainbow wave, color shift, visor, rain, and more. And there's reactive modes as well so you can type and it reacts to your typing or your system sound. They're also available too. You can also download community made configurations which is great for finding new lighting configurations and you can stack modes on top of each other such as layering the visor effect over rainbow wave for example which leads to some pretty unique combinations. Also you can control the light edge along the top individually if you prefer to have it separate from the uh, lighting that's going on with the keys. Now, I haven't mentioned them yet, but there are also six dedicated multimedia keys here on the top right. Those are still there, including the nicely textured volume roller. And the backlighting for these buttons is also RGB, along with the Windows lock key, which is over here. And there's also brightness and profile switches on the top left. All those have RGB in them, 
you can control them all and synchronize them with the RGB that's going on with the rest of the keys on the board. Hooray! So, on the plus side, the K95 Platinum definitely brings together a sweet spot collection of features for a mechanical gaming keyboard that stands out a bit from Corsair's previous op offerings. I like that it updates quickly and the software is also very robust now, and I didn't even delve into the advanced settings for this video. Uh, the USB pass-through is very nice to have, and I still like the design of these keyboards with the flat metal aluminum backplate being fairly easy to clean with the keycaps removed. My critiques here are mostly centered around the fact that this is called Platinum, and that Corsair said it was the best ever keyboard that they ever made and could possibly have made, I do see a couple areas that could be improved. First off, that USB pass-through could be USB 3.0 or even USB 3.1 compatible, which would be nice since there's already a USB 3 requirement to use the keyboard fully, uh, and I would like to be able to plug in like high-speed storage there for quick and easy access for like USB drives. I also do like a mic and headphone pass-through on a keyboard, which would be convenient, and it would align with those uh, cable routing channels that they added on the bottom bottom of the board. And finally, I'd say that the Cherry MX speed switches aren't necessarily for everyone. They're just a little bit too easy to mistype sometimes with their really low travel distance for uh, registering a keystroke. So I'm glad that there's an MX brown option, but it would be nice to see them uh, add blues and reds available as well for people who like those switch types. That is all for this video though, guys. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think of Corsair's newest keyboard in the comments section below. Is this worth $200 to you? I'm sure Corsair would like to know. Uh, also, of course, hit the like button, subscribe, check out the description for links to my store, and we'll see you in the next video.